Welcome to Daytona Beach in Florida. This is the 1967 Daytona Continental, 24 hours. And uh, we have a beautiful grid here with almost, I would say a, a very big uh, percentage of the uh, starting cars of that era, including the Ferraris the, and the Fords, and a lot more, as you can see, they are coming out to the um, coming out to the uh, to the track right now. We have Alfa Romeos, we have uh, Chaparral, Selby Daytonas, Mustang GT350. That was a Porsche 911. Not exactly the ones that uh, raced in here, but uh, pretty close. And a lot of the, the the drivers also that took part in this. So. Let me go out for a, a lap. This is the um, the uh, let me load. Got this with a full tank. All right. Let's go out for a lap, and then I will turn the car to the AI driver so we can talk a little more. Look at that. There's no collision here at the pits, so you see the cars that they are like touching or inside each other. But uh, right as you come out of it, uh, this gives some issues because I've been rear-ended a few times here at the pits. Just right for that. See, there's a car coming behind me. I hope I have lowered the, the sounds of the, of the cars enough so you can hear me talking. And... You can see on the bottom left we have the the tire uh, temperatures and condition because otherwise I won't be able to to track it. No grip at all. <laughs> we are going with fu uh, full fuel tank right now and very cold tires. Ugh. Well, the lap will not count. I'm not that worried right now. I have to lower the sound on my headset or I'm gonna go deaf. have some beautiful cars here I think that's a Porsche we're gonna be driving the uh, Ferrari 330 P4 of uh, you can see this is the spider I have no rooftop let me show you in there I have no no rooftop uh, this was driven in real life by um, Lorenzo Bandini, who unfortunately died like three months later at the Monaco Grand Prix, uh, Formula One Grand Prix. And oh, this is GP Labs car. <laughs> hey Jake, don't hit me. Thanks to him, I, I'm getting into this type of racing, and I want to make sure that he was in the in the race. I'm gonna cut out the wall. Okay. My goodness me. Driving and talking is not my forte, as you can see. Let the guys go back. Let's change to the cockpit. That's a Mustang. I'm driving with keyboard, guys. This is the uh, Chaparral 2D without the wing. This is a 1966 model, I think, that I found. Most of the cars are from the THR mod. I will leave the links for the um, for the cars and the track. Let me let me go in. I'm gonna swap to um, to the AI driver so we can talk. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna. This is a very long uh, race, so I'm gonna be using the AI driver actually, and we're gonna swap uh, stints in the uh, 
during the race what happened to that car but i'm gonna uh, break it down into two videos so the first video is gonna be the the practice that we're doing right now and then it's gonna be uh um the race there is gonna be 60 laps and i'm gonna be switching the stints between the ai driver and myself uh let's get there we go now the only thing is that i cannot change the camera once we have the the ai driver but let him go it's quite decent actually but you have to pay attention it's not like that you can go to bed and let him drive in and come back in the morning because uh, he will crash eventually uh, or have a mistake and come out of the um, here he usually with the cold tires he always goes out i noticed but if, when the tires warm up he's uh, he's pretty decent um yeah you have to check because if it comes out of the track the the car just st stays there doesn't know how to rejoin the uh, the track uh, many times so in that case, I would just uh, take uh, control of the car again, put him in the track, and let him go. This, but if he crashes against another car, uh, the wall, etc., whatever, uh, I will ask, I will take it. You know, we have to go to pits, uh, fix the car, etc. And they do go in when they run out of uh, fuel, so that uh, that event is. Well, there's a car out. That's a uh, number three. That's a four GT. MK2 number three, I don't remember who's the driver left. We have and we can see here. Dan Gurney, that's Gurney's car that he spin out. There. But you can see that actually uh, driving AI versus AI uh, wheel to wheel, at least it's uh, harder to crash. I would crash more often myself. But anyway. So, the Daytona 24 hours, this is a very, very nice uh, race for Ferrari lovers like myself. <laughs> I've been a Tifosi since forever. And in real life, you know, here in 1967, they, they finished 1, 2, 3, P1, 2, 3. And Ford had a, a terrible, a terrible race. Um, but this uh, started uh, way before the, the race took part in February. Uh, oh, there was some parts on the on the track. Uh, February 1967. Now, in December 1966, uh, Enzo Ferrari did something very unusual, and he shipped the two factory cars that took part in this race to New York. And uh, from New York, they took a they were track on a trailer taken down to Florida to do a one week of testing thanks to Firestone which they had uh, changed the tire supplier um, for the tool locks that they were using before and well that those uh, testing came out they came out very very happy with uh, with the results so 1966 you know uh, Ken Miles won the Daytona 24 hours with the 4 GT and well they finished yeah, one two three as well they won at Severin and uh, Le Mans uh, Ferrari was defeated uh, after 10 years of domination in the WRC the World Sports Cars Championship and they had to do something so Enzo Ferrari they told uh, Ford Gieri it was the technical director to hey whatever you need uh, but build a, a, a proper race car for 1967 and it was hard because you know Ferrari compared to Ford it was a very small manufacturer they have limited resources and at that year that time there was a lot of uh, problems with the uh, parts uh, um, shortages and uh, oh this is going to crash you know uh, look, this is uh, the Alfa Romeo GTA that actually took part in this race, the number 77. He was here at the 24 hours of Daytona. That skin is from Pasta 2000. Very, very nice. And uh, well, uh, for Jerry came up with a four liter uh, engine with the Lucas injection and uh, 30 more horsepower that uh, they had, the, the previous model had 
420, if I remember correctly. So this is 450. And uh, one of the the major problems that they had uh, was a, an unreliable typo uh, gearbox. So they designed an in-house. They did it themselves a five-gear uh, transmission, and they also changed the the wheels. They had a, a cast magnesium Campagnolo. But I will show you uh, later. This uh, I think it is the, the same that they use. Uh, I don't know if exactly the same, but also they cast magnesium for the Formula One car. That is very... I'm going to take control of the car for a moment. So I can change the, the camera. And there you are. You see the, the uh, that color wheels in there. This very particular of this model. That's the, the cast magnesium from Campagnolo. And there were wider... Wider... Um, uh, rubber. The, the wider wheels uh, made by Firestone. Uh, we mentioned before and firestone is that uh, help them uh, get the, the testing here in at daytona uh, i cannot change the camera once uh, and with the ai driver and when they came to to daytona actually enzo ferrari told the uh, uh, dragoni there's the the racing department director that's the the car of uh, david piper Actually, I had to use this a P4, but they didn't race with a P4. They raced with a P2, actually. But uh, it's the only one that I, I could find. It's the same as the the, the Berlinetta. This is the Spider, the Berlinetta that um, our teammates are driving. They have uh, because they have the rooftop. It's much faster, actually. Like uh, oh, I hope we don't have issues with the AI in this run. I've done like 1,400 kilometers of testing in, in this track already to, to record this race. And, um, well... Uh, oh, it's gonna... It's, 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 almost... Enzo Ferrari told Dragoni to... Whatever happened, don't pass the... Um, don't lower the, the track record that Ken Mice uh, had in uh, made in 1966 and, uh, and there is a, there's a, a, a theory that uh, secretly he told the drivers the opposite to actually uh, lower the beat the the record so he could fire Dragoni he was very influent uh, man uh, at the time but uh, there were some some problems like they had with John Surtis you know, the John Sortis won the F1 championship in 1964 with Ferrari. And uh, in 1965, uh, Dragoni didn't give him a... Sortis did have an accident with a Canam car, I think. Uh, or a Group 7 was called. Uh, it wasn't Canam until 66. Um, and he didn't give him a wheel for Le Mans in 1965. And John Sortis... Uh, went to ask uh, for an explanation and he didn't like what uh, he was told and right there he just quit and left Ferrari uh, and uh, many people would say that uh, that decision cost both uh, Surtis and Ferrari the, the Formula, One, Formula One championship in 19 uh, uh, in 1965 they were the, the, the favorites there's only one minute left so I'm gonna I'm gonna get control of the car Okay, right here. Okay. Here we are. Let me go back to the pits, actually. All right. So how many... Uh, okay, 15.1. I had to change the, the settings because otherwise I wouldn't reach the the, min from the settings from the standard uh, that it comes with the car for this, uh, for this track. Otherwise, we would be too low and we would hit the, the ground. So we can do 15 laps and that's what I'm going to try to do, like 14. I don't know if we can make 15. Uh, and then swap uh, this for the race, I, I mean. But anyway, so how are the times? Terrible. I think I... 
Yeah, the AI, look at that. Because I didn't do a, a lap time my, myself. And for some reason, during the race, actually, he did lower... I, I did test this uh, not long ago. To see the AI, uh, how would it go? And uh, one thing that I have done, actually, I will show you the, the, the settings that I have. Uh, for the race at the end of the of this video um, bit, so it will be yeah at the end of this video and the next video will be the the race so after qualifying i will show you that okay we are in qualifying right now so let me let me do a lap just to to get some uh, a time and then we'll give it back to the to the to the ai we need a, a round oh a car is coming we need a round one lap to warm up the tires enough and i set the uh, the aggressiveness aggressiveness of the the, uh, the ai drivers around i think it was 35 i will look at that later but i had to lower the uh, the damage because uh, you know the uh oh i'm gonna go out the track almost have to get used this drives much different than the uh, formula one this is the gt1 the gt40 mk1 we will have ahead of us no, i'm gonna let him go i need to warm up the tires oh i'm gonna go out don't speed don't speed there are some parts of the track that i'm faster than the ai but some others, they, they are much faster also because of the, the car, right? The, the maximum speed you will see uh, I can get at the at the bank here. 31 degrees uh, bank, banking is uh, 280. My teammates, the Ferrari, the Berlinetta with the rooftop, they, they have a, a maximum of uh, around 300 kilometers, at least with the settings that, uh, that I have for the, for the track. Uh, the specs it says 320 and the the Ford the Ford uh, GT40s and the Chaparral the Chaparral is the fastest in this track if there's uh, they don't crash or uh, or anything they can easily win the, the race here and in real life actually they were very fast as well but they had a the, the 2D actually wasn't as fast, but uh, broke uh, the transmission and, and we didn't finish the race. And the one, the 2F with the um, with the wing, did crash. They were leading the, the race, they were in first position. And they crashed, um, I will show you where. Uh, at the end of turn six, well, at the end, at turn six, before going into the uh, the oval part, because uh, the tarmac actually got uh, uh, a new asphalt before the race, but uh, it was very fresh and it was actually deteriorating as the race went on. These cars with uh, with big tires. They would uh, the green and there was like a you know some um, like pebbles on the like a sheet of uh, of uh, asphalt in there that was loose right here and at the coming out of this turn oh the chaparral hit the wall with the rear wheel that I almost did myself and Bill Hill made it back to the pits they tried to repair it but two laps later they had to retire. But here I have tried uh, many, many things, and um, yeah, normally uh, the Chaparral is very, very fast. If uh, there's no many issues, uh, it can win. Uh, we we'll have to see if we are lucky, and we can do the the one, two, three that Ferrari. <laughs> That's going to be very difficult. Very easy, and with uh, this is uh, slower cars. Uh, in real life they would move to the lower side here right to the inside but uh, in racing this is uh, in Aceto Corsa you probably have seen in the uh, 
That's a pretty bad lap to go free. I'm gonna do another one. And I lost my chain of thought. Huh? Oh, the, the slower cars, they don't move out of the way. They do the the best line. Doesn't matter who is coming around. So you have to have that in mind. At the beginning, I was crashing all the time and rear-ending them because I, I was expecting them to get out of the way. And yeah, <laughs> realize yeah, this is a, a game. Not uh, they are not people, and they don't care. They just want to go ahead of you, no matter what. This is one, uh, this couple of turns, I, I could get uh, some time from the AI. I'm going to hot. This is the MGB. Very slow car. Let's see if I can, can get a... I don't want the pole. But uh, to be at the front, in real life, uh, Baldini and uh, Chris Simon they they quali in P4, and we will talk more about the race during the during the race. <laughs> Mostly when they they I uh, take the steam. Here I can go flat out, but the um, with the Berlinetta that I also tried it, I'm gonna hit the bank. Um, I have to let go of the uh, of the throttle. And here the pitch is a very very hard place because the AI to get into the pitch they go on the right and they just cut across the the uh, the circuit to go to the pitch. But the Ford had a, a problem in there. Or, or a Porsche, I don't know who the heck that was. Okay, 201, I mean I mean first. 201 is okay. I think I, I'm gonna go back to pitch. Alright. And maybe we give the AI some lower yeah, 40 liters, five laps, they will come in and, and go back uh, out again. What are we doing? So another Ferrari, the David Piper, the Chaparral is there, or oh, they will improve that for sure. Okay, let's uh, let's let the um, the AI go at it, go at it. While we keep talking. Ah. Now with cold tires. Oh, look at that! I might have to to restart the. Um, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of issues, and it's a lottery. You don't know exactly each time that you start uh, the race. How is it gonna go? Uh, sometimes they, they behave pretty well, and you don't have many retirees. And other times, uh, by lap 20, uh, with, with the same aggression, etc. Huh? Uh, by lap 20, there was only two cars, myself and another one. <laughs> you don't want a race like that. So ah, another thing that I haven't mentioned is that we're gonna be using a rolling uh, start. Uh, I found a mod made by a Japanese guy. I made a video. Uh, testing the the mod that has been out for a, a week or so, so you can check that and they, they will be the video description if you want to try it. It works well, but uh, sometimes you need to st uh, do restart the the beginning of the race because weird things happen. Um, doing that, but we'll talk the details when we get into the uh, into the race proper. The AI driver goes pretty decent. Once the, the race goes on, and uh, when he gets a good uh, the tires in good temperature, also, they, they go pretty pretty nice as well. So, since this is an endurance race, and uh, and I did was driven by two drivers, I want to swap and um, and leave the AI as well driving. And as I mentioned, if they hit something, etc., uh, I would only take control of the car if it gets to one side of the of the grass, I, for example, that they get lost and they don't know how to how to get back into the track. 
and just put it back into the track and give the, the control to the air again. You see here, when they get to, into the pot, uh, into the boxes, the pit stops, the, the, there's always some havoc in there. And there's also a glitch with the when the, the night comes down, for some reason, it gets dark, but um, uh, the sun is still uh, and uh, is still there, and it blinds you in some parts. So most of the track is, is dark, but in some other parts, it's like you have the sun in your eyes and during the night. So it's very, it's very strange. I tried, uh, so I don't know how to fix it. So I'm gonna have to deal with it during the during the race. Now I'm gonna be going with uh, 60 laps. What we're gonna do is uh, like a two hours. This is two minutes something the, the lap time. So it's gonna be over two two hours. Uh, I said I did try with uh, times 12, but uh, then it would be more than 24 hours actually. So I'm gonna do it at times 10. The uh, fuel and the uh, and the tires are at times three. So to make sure that we have to get into the pits, we need to uh, fill up the tank several times and uh, swap uh, the drivers, etc. But uh, I'm loving this. This is the first uh, race that I do for endurance. Uh, this is my 1967 uh, race uh, year that I'm gonna do as many as many uh, competitions as, as I can. So I started with the Formula One. If you haven't watched it, I recommend that you give it a look in, in the channel. If you are still watching here, it's because you like vintage racing, etc. Um, I started with the, the Formula One South African Grand Prix at Kealami, that was raced in January. And now I understand, I raced with Ferrari in there, but I didn't know why they didn't take part uh, in the race. Here is uh, Jake on GP Labs. Thank you, Jake, for you are so contagious. The uh, love for vintage cars they really got me into this. Um, and actually, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> but these cars, uh, it takes forever for the AI to to take take them out, like retire them. You know, they're still there and they can create a lot of uh, havoc. Actually, but we are in second position now. Uh, it's not improving my lifetimes. You can see the front uh, 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 left, the front left tire. Uh, it's hard for the AI to get it into temperature with the settings that I'm using. Uh, for me, I, I do after two laps, I think I get it into temperature and it sticks in there. Maybe because I I, I don't dr drive as clean and I do more uh, I don't know speed the car more often or something and it gets it more temperature. I don't know. The cars are beautiful. So the cars are from THR, uh, most of them. Uh, some others uh, I got uh, uh, at other websites. Uh, and the track, I don't remember exactly right now the uh, the model that made it. But this is the Daytona 60s and 70s you have uh, in here. So I, sel I have selected the 60s, and it was uh, it was updated in January uh, and added this. Uh, this painting the, the rails in here uh, before they didn't have it that's very 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 cool so going back to the event actually in 1960 December 1966 Ferrari came to test uh, at the track uh, in the stand in the stands the grandstands because it was the pits uh, were closed to public right but the, the stands were not so anybody would go in and without you know it was free uh, and and look at the Ferrari doing their uh, working right and among the, the the people in there were the the Ford engineers of course and they had already uh, reserved the track for the following week so as soon as the Ferrari team left for Italy they bought the, their cars in there and they were testing the third generation of the GT40 MK2s. It was called the J-Car, right? This J-Car gave them a lot of troubles. And actually, uh, sadly, uh, in the summer of 1966, Ken Miles died uh, while testing, testing the car. And not only him, but another two drivers also died testing the, the car. So it was, he came out uh, of the gate with a lot of problems. 
and uh, here they uh, when they came to taste to test the car in Daytona they had a lot of problems uh, as well and it was deemed uh, unraceworthy they didn't participate actually uh, the J car didn't participate uh, at Daytona they did at Sebring though uh, you know, they, they do a, lo a lot of changes and actually the gt 40 mk 2s that uh, took part in here after seeing that uh, ferrari had beaten the uh, the track record uh, set by ken miles etc they gave more power to the to the car they um they changed it. they had a new gearbox uh, i think it was t44 it was called and um, they tried to uh, put a, a, a a more rigid um, cage, uh, roll cage at, in the car, um, but this resulted in a very heavy, very heavy car that actually, when they waited, uh, the car at, at the beginning of the Daytona 2400, 24 hours, sorry, <laughs> the uh, rocket is coming to to refuel. The um, the Ford GT2, GT40 Mark II weighted 1000 pounds more than the ferraris so it was a uh, very very heavy and one of the handicaps that they had among with the the transmission the gearbox where the the achilles uh, my goodness what a stop the achilles heel of, uh, of that car we will talk more about that during the uh the race look at that they don't take the cars out so here in the pits actually there's no collision but as you come out, uh, before getting onto the track, it does have um, the, the collision. So I had a, a lot of issues in there. And my first video that I, I, I saw, yeah, see, he always the AI always comes out with cold tires. Here. And the, they join the, the track in very uh, very weird fashion. <laughs> let's let's get get a this camera. Yeah. With that. The track looks beautiful and the cars are awesome. I mean, I really love this. I never thought this uh, endurance races before. I'm gonna try to do, I mentioned this before. I'm gonna try to do the whole calendar of the WSC, the F1 uh, championship, including the non championship races, the F2, including the F2 non uh, championship races as well and some other events that, uh, that I can find for 1967. Like maybe the Japan Grand Prix, the Japanese Grand Prix, uh, the 12 hours of uh, rains, something like that. You know, we'll, we'll go along the, the, as we go during the year, wherever I can find the tracks, the cars, etc. We will go into that. So we're still in second. Let's see who is uh, Mike Spence. Oh, he went down to 159. Mike Parts with the Berlinetta is very close to us. Uh, like 600 of a second. Um, I'm hoping that he passes me actually. Ooh, his car is faster than ours. And we have a, oh, all the Ferraris actually. David Piper. The, uh, the Ferrari for the, the Belgian team, the uh, Franco Champs, the uh, yellow that is there, and then we have the GT40, Bruce McLaren actually is in, is in eighth position, that's a, a little bit uh, slow, slow time, really grand. A Selby Daytona, I have in there. That's one thing that I didn't understand. I was checking uh, uh, about the, the race, right? And when Ford figured out that they're going to have a, a hard time in this race, they just went by numbers. So they they got six cars, GT40 MK2s. Three, four, uh, three cars were for Selby. And uh, the other three for... Um, uh, the, the, I, where are they called? The brothers, the Hulman. It doesn't come to my mind. And then a lot of uh, uh, some cortinas, the 
Jeep de Mustang, Selby, Selby Mustang. A lot of cars. Eh. And I didn't understand at the beginning, but what does that matter, right? If uh, they are in different class. But uh, this is what matters. I realized when I started testing uh, driving in this uh, in this track that going around the slower cars is uh, is a, a, a very difficult task. So having a lot of ports to to pass by is uh, is quite difficult. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, we are position second of 59. So in the real event. There were six, I think there were 62 uh, cars uh, that um, signed up to. Oh, look at that! He hit the wall. So if this happens during the race, we're gonna eat it with potatoes. We're gonna have to to take it. So whatever day I drive, I'm gonna have to take with me. And when when I get, I did a testing, uh, the, a full race. Look at that! Oh, there's a ton of problems in the at the pit stop. That's what I mentioned. That uh, with the collision that. It, it, it goes from no, no having collision to having it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, crashes in there. I, I would like the. Uh, I would prefer actually to have collision at the pits. So you know, you have to avoid the, the other cars. And but I guess that there's not enough room to to leave all. There are so many. I think there's 60 the maximum that you can. 60 or 80. I don't remember for this track. I don't know if it's, they left it without collision because the because this because the, the space at the pit stop is not very big. I, I'm not sure about that. You see, we, we can see actually the glitches that we have with the with the night, the, the sun appearing around. But what I was mentioning, uh, 62 cars that were uh, designing to to race. This is a triumph that we just passed. You see, there's the sun. So this, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know if it's uh, because of the state of the, the mod, the, the, the track right now. But uh, at some times during the night, it gets a little bit annoying and uh, because it blinds you completely. And you have a car in front, I, I can't see it. The AI can drive much better in these conditions, but uh, if I can see, you know, there's nothing I can do. So that's uh, something to take into, into account. Uh, and in the end of the race, there were three cars that didn't take part. So there were 59 cars that uh, started the race, and uh, I have 59 uh, for this race, as you can see as well. So not exactly the 59 that took part, but most of them, uh, at least in manufacturers. And uh, so we have the all the. Uh, oh, he made a mistake. Look at that. Let's see if he can come back. Or I need to take... No, he just come back this time. Come on, come on. Maybe not. I'll get back to him. So I will do something like this during the race. If, uh, you know, if we get the AI gets lost, can't find the line or whatever. So I would do that. Take control of the car, move it a little bit and give it back to him. To finish his steam. Whenever he goes back to... to uh, there's the sun, you can see. Whenever he gets back to, to refuel, etc., then I will take control of the car myself. And 60 laps would be the ideal would be four stints, but uh, there's gonna be more because we're gonna hit something, uh, we're gonna have to fix, etc., and there's gonna be more. Uh, let's see how the, the race goes. Well, we have six minutes left of qualifying, I, we're still in second. The Saparel is still in first and they are not getting close to my time, so I'm not going to take control of the, of the car. The lowest that I have done is 159.0, I think, with this car. So I could even take pole, but that would be with my best ever lap, more or less. Uh, oh no. uh, during the race, actually, with low, um, with low fuel, I did a 158. A high 158, and actually the AI beat me and did a 157 when I try when I test a, a full race. The only thing is that uh, I look at that that the cars that get in there also can be in a lot of trouble. Let's hope that we have a good uh, a good race. 
with the, with the uh, I lowered the damage from 30%, that's what I was mentioning. Uh, I had it at 30% and only 9 cars finished in my testing. I lowered to 20. I don't want to put it at 0 because this is an endurance race that you have to take... Uh, you have to take... Uh, you know, this shit happens, so pardon my French, and you have to deal with it. Or you have to change parts, etc. And, uh, you know, you hit other cars, you, you come out of the track, you hit a wall or whatever. And uh, if you can already at 20-30%, most of the times you're going to continue. But the AI sometimes doesn't. And uh, I want more cars to finish. Nine cars, I mean, uh, it's very little. Even though in real life, only 23, I think, uh, actually finish the race. Um, but, but nine is very little. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a, a, like that, like 25 or something like that. If I, I leave it too low, I don't want all the cars to, to finish, you know, because this, uh, this is a fight uh, against the, the, the attrition, <laughs> durability. So, let's, see, let's see how it goes. But anyway, we're almost done with the, with the uh, qualifying. I hope, uh, guys, you don't mind that most of... I gave it to the AI, otherwise I can't concentrate and I want to, I want to talk uh, all these things that many, many people already know all these things, but uh, I would like to, to share. Uh, I'm loving it, I'm loving these uh, endurance races that I'm, well, this is the first one that I'm trying, but I'm loving it with Assetto uh, Corsa. And uh, I actually found out about the AI driver by, by chance, because uh, I guess I hate uh, I hit the key and suddenly the car was driving by itself. So what is this? And I had to come out and check it online. Is it, does it, does we have, do we have AI driver uh, in Aceto Corsa? And yes, we have. And in this particular, I have read that it's not very good, but actually in this track, actually it works uh, pretty decent. So I want to use it. I want to use it. Like, uh, I want to try the, uh, I never played GTR 2. And this, uh, this mod, the Power and Glory, I want to try it out. Uh, I bought uh, the whole Simbin collection after watching GP Labs uh, his, with his videos. And I want to try GTR2 more than anything for the endurance races. But uh, with Assetto Corsa, I'm loving it uh, as well. I don't know if uh, it's uh, uh, very good for wheels, etc. I don't have a wheel, I, don't, I can't afford it. I, I don't have a space to place it. So I. Uh, I'm pretty bad with controller, so I'm used to keyboard, and with keyboard, I'm, I'm really loving it. You will see me do weird driving, weird lines, etc., but um, it's still, it's still playable, very much playable, as, uh, as you will see. <laughs> but anyway, uh, after this, I'm going to leave you now, I'm not going to talk these last two minutes, so you can listen to the engine here. And um, I will see you after the fact with the, the settings for the race. And I hope to see you with the next video with the race proper. Uh, let's see what we can do against the, the forts. <laughs> see you later, guys.
So here we are with the settings of the race. That uh, if you are interested, maybe you want to to try yourself something similar at least. Um, this is what I've done. Now I I I have tested a lot. I'm recording this after the fact. I already already did the race because you know uh, as a weekend you can't uh, save and come out after the quali and then uh, do the race. So I, I have to do everything <laughs> uh, uh, in one go. Opponent's strength, I left it at 88, and uh, the aggression at 25. I tried many combinations, and this uh, was the, what it worked the best for me to uh, have a um, somewhat, somewhat uh, entertaining race. You know, I don't want to, if I put everything uh, here at 100% for the opponents, but maybe I finish last, or, uh, you know, this is going to be... Not, not that enjoyable. <laughs> not that I need to win every race, but uh, yeah, try to make it a little bit you know, interesting, at least for myself. <laughs> so you see, I, I've driven with the, the car, the Spider, 1,000 kilometers, including this is including the race now, and on track, 1,500 kilometers. It's a, a ton. Uh, before the race, how much is, is this actually? Uh, 60 laps. That doesn't tell you. Laps. It's uh, 367 kilometers, two hours. Yeah, that's where, where it lasted. Yes. But this is what we did the, the weekend. So the settings for the uh, the cars, etc. I have uh, like this mechanical damage. I lower to 20 percent. I try. Well, I try at 100 because the Formula One race that I did at Kealami, uh, uh, the Formula One, I'm doing it with 100 percent. And you know you can do it, but here if it's too too high, uh, it's not not as much as the, the damage that I wanna have to, to take into account for my car. But it's just <laughs> I will finish with myself. Uh, the only car uh, at the, after the race. I did try at 30 percent. I did a a test. Uh, I did the full race uh, using the AI driver to see how it worked if he could. Uh, uh, do by himself, etc. And actually, one of the, the the times that I tried at lap 20 or so, we were two cars left. Uh, so I lowered it. Uh, from I was high, it was higher at that time. I lowered to 30, 30 percent. We finished nine cars, and so in the end, I left it at 20. And you will see in the race, the next video, that actually, uh, I think it was uh, like 30 cars, 29 cars, or something like that, uh, finished the race. So it was pretty, pretty nice race. I recommend that you that you watch it, even though if you fast forward a bit or whatever, but uh, you don't want to watch it all, two hours, <laughs> over two hours. I end up uh, pretty tired after <laughs> that. The fuel consumption is entire wear at times three, and this forces me to, to make some uh, pit stops to change tires and refuel, etc. And uh, what else can I, can I give you? Well, 60 laps, as I mentioned, that's a, a little over two hours. The weather, overcast the clouds, because it's how it started, uh, starting at 15.06. The race in real life starts at 15.09. And the track in green condition, you know, you have the, the optimum, but uh, for vintage races, I always use green. And uh, like for 1923, the French Grand Prix that I did, and uh, all the stuff that I'm gonna do, I will use old. But for the, these vintage races, I'm using green because the tracks are not old. They, they were just a few years uh, old at that time in 1967. So I'm using the, the green. Um, track uh, temperature, more or less, what uh, I read in here. I will show you actually. I will leave the. Uh, most of what I have been talking about during the uh, the practice and qualifying is uh, I read it here and for well, different sites, but this one has a, a ton of stuff. It's a good read. Uh, I will leave the link if you want to, to give it a look. It's a, a pretty good read. Uh, yeah, I really I really enjoy it. And also here, racing sports uh, cars. This website I found the uh, race results, etc. But you have a ton of uh, information, the, the different cars, the teams, the numbers that they use, etc. And this I used to actually look for the cars that participate and, and more or less do uh, as, uh, as similar as possible 
uh, agreed, right? Uh, they agreed a, a similar as possible. So here you can say I was driving with the, the Spider, sorry, the Ferrari 330P4, and then uh, most of the cars are from the WS. C60, this is from THR, I will leave the link as well, and you have the the, um, the different uh, skins with the, the drivers, etc. Pretty cool. Uh, all the Ferraris, the Ford, GT, Ferrari 250 LM, and then I'm looking, I went a little bit out of the, no, also from THR, you have the ACL GTCs, uh, TCL, they are all from THR. I also found a few like this one, this Ferrari. I just found outside on, on our website and uh, I included this. So have the, the Ferrari 275 GTBC. Not the same color, but uh, it's the, the NART, uh, North American Racing Team. The Chaparral 2D, I found it also outside of uh, the THR modes. The, the Triumph TR4, I couldn't find it uh, anywhere, so I used the TR3B race, the more or less, uh, with the Alfa Romeo. This is the one that I mentioned during the video. That is uh, the skin from Pasta 2000. It is actually raced in the 24 hours. It would be somewhere around, around here. But you see, tri Triumph TR4A, I couldn't find them. I have an MGP GT that uh, didn't finish, <laughs> oh, not classified. Uh, I couldn't find this ASA, anyway, the Volvos I couldn't find. The Alfa Romeo GTA, was it this one? No, number 77, this one, number 77, see? Oh, this is the one that uh, from Pasta 2000 that I included in the, uh, the video. But um, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. I don't know what else could I tell you that you would find interesting. Uh, so this is what I do uh, for most of the races. I'm already preparing for Sebring. Uh, I didn't save anything here yet, but I have Sebring here on the side. <laughs> and the next, uh, but before that, we're going to have more. Huh? Uh, we have the, the World Sports Car Championship. We did the Daytona. And the next one is Sebring. That was in April. But between now and then, we have uh, many other races. We have... Uh, uh, Formula One non-championship uh, event. The Formula Two will start again. It has a couple of rounds, and right now I'm doing the Tasman series uh, with uh, Teletonga. The um, Lakeside is the next one, the first round in Australia, and all that. So, if you like this type of uh, events, there's a, a ton of it coming coming up. So you can see, for example, from Lakeside is the next one that I'm gonna be trying. I already have the the grid prepared. I found the, the track. It's not a vintage track though, but uh, when I find the, the, the vintage, I use the vintage. If not, I, I use what I can find. And actually, I will leave all the the links that I can, so you can, if you haven't found it before, you can give it a look. Uh, where is it? For the track, we have uh, this one has the 60s and 70s. So this is the 60s, and then you have for with the smoke, no smoke, the oval. Uh, you're going to race with the the, the, uh, the NASCAR and all that. And then you have uh, online and the 70s, etc. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I want to leave here so the video doesn't get too long. And uh, I hope to see you with the next one that will be the, the race proper. And I don't tell you how I finished, but I did manage to finish the race after 60 laps. So I'm very happy with that. Anyway, thank you very much. Please take care. Be safe. This was Dario. And see you with the next one. Bye-bye for now.